Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at this lovely integral, which is the integral from e to infinity of x to the power of 1 minus the natural log of x. Now our first step is going to be a very simple one. It's just going to be splitting up x to the 1 minus ln x into x to the 1 times by x to the negative natural log of x. And we're mostly just doing this in order to make the next step slightly clearer. And that next step is something we should always think about when we have a lower bound of e and when we see natural logs involved in our integrals it's will it be advantageous to us to rewrite our terms in the integrand with a base of e and what i mean by that is that we can write x as e to the power of the natural log of x and similarly we can write x to the negative natural log of x as e to the natural log of x to the negative natural log of x and whenever we have a power within the natural log, we can bring it down. So really, this is going to become ln x times negative ln x, or in other words, negative ln squared x. And now both of our terms in the integrand have the same base. And so we can just simplify this into e to the ln x minus ln squared x. And given that we have got this lower bound of e and that we've got lots of natural logs in our integrand, it definitely seems like a smart next step to make the substitution u equals ln x. And of course this means that du is going to equal dx over x. And how can we write x in terms of u? Well, raise both sides of this equation to the power of e, and we'll clearly see that x is equal to e to the u. So if we multiply through by x on both sides of this equation, we know that e to the u du is equal to dx. So all we have to do now is make our final substitutions and consider the bounds. So clearly as x approaches e, u will approach one, and as x approaches infinity, u will approach infinity as well. And so we can rewrite i as the integral from 1 now to infinity of e to the u minus u squared times e to the u du. And of course these bases are now the same. So we can add our u's together and we now are considering the integral of e to the 2u minus u squared all with respect to u. So I've just made some space for us to work out on the board and whenever I see integrals that have something that looks like this, a negative u squared and a 2u, and it's something going from 1 to infinity as well, I'm thinking this looks slightly like the Gaussian integral. And it might seem like a bit of a jump to make, but actually we've got something squared and we've got an infinite upper bound. And so perhaps a smart next step would be, given that the Gaussian integral is of e to the negative x squared with respect to x, is could we make our exponent something squared and find a comparison point? Now in our case, we'd be looking to take negative u squared plus 2u into something of the form negative x squared. And in our case, once we've cancelled out our negatives, we'll think what can we do to make this u squared minus 2u into something factorizable? Well, if we add a 1 here, this can clearly be factorised into u minus 1 squared. So with this knowledge, we can kind of clearly see now that what would be ideal would be if we could have a negative 1 here in our integrand, because it would mean that we could rewrite this as the integral from 1 to infinity of e to the negative u minus 1 squared with respect to u. We can't go around just dividing by e like that without countering for it somewhere else. So let's multiply by e2 on the outside of the integral, and this ensures that everything has stayed the same. And now that we've written this integral out, we can see even more how close it is to a Gaussian. In fact, it's just one substitution away. All we have to do is let x equal u minus 1, leaving dx equal to du. And of course, let's consider our bounds. As u approaches 1, x approaches 0. And as u approaches infinity, x approaches infinity. And we've got ourselves a new integral. It's e multiplied by the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. Now, I'm sure most people will be familiar with this integral. If you're not, this is half of the Gaussian integral, but of course it's an even function, so we just divide through by 2. And it's a very well-known fact that the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the negative x squared dx is equal to the square root of pi. And so if our bound starts from 0 instead, 
we just half our result. And this means that our integral must be equal to e multiplied by the square root of pi all over two. So I hope you've enjoyed this integral. It's kind of a quick one that we've gone through today, but I think it's really lovely because it just shows that substitution is a very powerful thing. We only had to make two substitutions there and do a bit of rearrangement, and it turns a, a very unfamiliar looking integral into something very approachable and very doable. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Share this with someone that you think would enjoy it. And if you like integral problems like this, I've got a whole playlist of them on my channel, so check it out. And thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye.